What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to level 3 of the Zerg campaign where we get to face off against the Terrans for the first time playing, oh not the first time, but against a full scale Terran base playing as Zerg. Pardon me, I forgot that we faced off against the Terran level 1 as well. This level can be pretty challenging if you don't approach it correctly. The Terran are in an incredibly good position. They have uh, cliff sides that they use to their advantage. So uh, it's going to take a little bit of time before we really start engaging them. But for the time being, a little bit of micromanagement. Try not to lose too many of these units. Last one, Hydralisk, not the end of the world. More important, not to lose any of our Mutalisks. Now, um, we will be facing a couple of attacks from the Terran. They generally attack from the western side and from the northwestern side. So, if you really want to be safe, the objective is to make sure that we protect the mature Chrysalis and also wipe out the Terran at the same time. So, building some defenses, maybe two sunken colonies or so, is generally a good idea. Otherwise, if you don't really want to waste your resources on something like that, just make units. Um, but in the long run it might be cheaper to go for the defenses because with their attacks you'll probably lose a couple of units in between now um as stated before zerg units do heal themselves so don't worry too much when they start to go low on health the mutalisk as we saw in um, level 2 of this campaign, they're a pretty, pretty effective flying unit. They're incredibly fast, first of all. Ooh, there's another marine. They're incredibly fast flyers, and uh, with their glaives, they can definitely pack a punch, especially if you have a group of 12 or even 24 of these guys. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely use them to your advantage. Especially if you want to make harassment or quick hit and run kind of tactics. Now, um, we should secure this base on the top side as early as we can so that we can benefit from the extra bit of minerals and gas. We are definitely going to be needing it for um, when we start moving into creating mutalisks. So, um,. Let's build some defenses in the meantime. We might be experiencing an attack very, very soon. And we don't want to be caught off guard. Build your sunken colonies close to one another so that you can deal the full amount of damage. And uh, from here on out, just continue making drones. We can start moving towards getting gas. Just get the basics with the Zerg up and running. We're going to be making a ton of drones in order to keep this mineral line flowing effectively. And yeah, that's going to be the first part of this level. Now, it should be mentioned that in order for Zerg to be at their most effective, you need to constantly be, be using their larva. Um, most races, well, the other two races, their... Um, their main resources focus on minerals and gas, but Zerg on the other hand has got a third resource which is larva. So um, the idea behind Zerg is to constantly use your larva for something. You know, don't don't let it build up too much because for every larva that you did not use, you know, that's a potential unit drone or overlord that you could have been making. So uh, just keep those little things in mind when you play Zerg, as you have. A lot of resources to your disposal it of course becomes easier and easier to just keep on using these drones so um, we can start getting our lair and start getting some of the upgrades we will be using a mixture of um, zerglings hydrolisks and mutalisks for this level the zerglings to be cannon fodder and also of course to help with damage the mutalisks to do as much harassment and damage to soften up the terran oh i forgot that i sent one and then finally, of course, the Hydralisks to do the bulk of the damage for us because they are, uh, well, they are definitely more durable, even though it doesn't seem like it, but they are a little bit more durable than the Mutalisks. And they also do deal a ton of damage. So yeah, uh, as mentioned, just keep 
keep on making drones for the meantime so that we can also quickly supply this area once that hatchery is completed and uh, when the time comes we will be committed to units now here we go this is this attack that i uh, uh told you about that would come eventually so the idea to work with mutilus especially if you're facing against units that can actually attack them you um you you hit and run you would you would do a maneuver for an example like this it, it does involve a lot of right clicking though you would move in sweep and go out sweep and move out that is of course if you are working against units that um units that can attack the mutilus if you have units like fire bats that you're working against then there's not really any need to worry about anything as a uh, yeah you can just focus on dealing as much damage as you possibly can but uh the idea behind the hit and run taxes is to make sure a that your mutilus don't get gunned down and receive maximum damage but also number two so that you can in turn do something like micromanagement in order to make sure that you move some of your mutilisks out of the way so uh yeah small little things that you do in order to gain an advantage against your opponent keep on making the drones the space over here is pretty saturated oops done with that one and um, let's start moving towards getting a spire, which is essential for our upgrade for uh, or, or our access to Mutalisk. In this base over here, it's also going to be a good idea to build a couple of sunken colonies because um, they might shift their focus towards attacking this base instead, and we definitely don't want to end up losing it. As you can see, the larva spawn really, really quickly, and once it reaches three, then you are capped out with larva in that section. More the reason why you should constantly be spending your larva on uh, uh, units of sorts. So I would say that uh, this is this is a good amount of units for us. We or, or drones, I mean. We can now move towards getting our upgrades up and running. Just start making all of the upgrades available to you. The Spire will be finishing pretty soon. And with that, we have a very, very decent flow of income coming in. And uh, let's make some extra Hydralisks and any kind of unit to our disposal should be noted that two hatcheries like this focusing on making zerglings creates a full group of zerglings so um yeah zerglings are pretty awesome units to say the least get carapace before you get the damage as it applies for all of our ground troops and uh the same will apply for the mutalists we want them to to be as durable as we possibly as they possibly can um, the reason being, we want them to survive so that we don't have to waste too much money on rebuilding them and stuff. Okay, uh, slight shift in our hotkeys. Keep those upgrades blank. Ah, this is what I'm talking about. Before they even get a chance to do a lot of damage, they've already perished. <laughs> Okay. All right, it's time for us to move over to making a bunch of mutalisks. If I have it correctly, the natural hotkey for mutalisks is M, but I've changed mine to T. Uh, I have it from StarCraft 2. Okay, and as you can see, our gas is also getting depleted very, very quickly, and I've got about overlords which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Overlords we can use to our advantage to scout the map, gain a lot of information, place them on strategic areas, not to get harassed or caught off guard. A pretty awesome unit, and also it serves as a detector, so it's very, very difficult in StarCraft 1 at least to catch Zerg off guard with cloaked units. But um, of course, the drawback of Overlords is if they die, you can very quickly get supply capped as well. Keep those little things in mind. Speed. 
All right. Okay, so we have a decent group of mutalisks. Um, for shits and giggles, we can make sure. Ah, right, here we go. Uh, for shits and giggles, we can make sure that we have 12 mutalisks instead of just one. Ooh. You see, this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. So, um, what I did is I, I held shift and then I clicked on those that we damaged to get them out of the group. Now they can heal up while we just go and continue doing a lot of damage. Oops. Boy, it's pretty annoying when you, um, misclick. And there you go. We have done quite a bit of damage to them and lost none of our mutilers. We are now preparing for a full-scale assault just getting our hydralisks and everything ready um, oh yeah it should be noted that um, generally what you can do is just rush their base and see if you can break through somehow um, I would not recommend this as you can end up losing too many units what I would recommend however is that you try to break through this line over here which takes a little bit of time but then using a massive amount of overlords in order to just drop your units in over here, which means that you pretty much bypass the majority of their defenses. So, um, let's see if we're gonna... No, actually, perfect. Perfect. So make sure that we have one of our more durable mutalisks in the front to target the damage. Perfect. And now we pull out again. So those bunkers are now permanently over and done with. Oh, raids don't really do well against mutilists, especially not in box like that. Keep that in mind. Okay, upgrades are coming up nicely. We have a fat army that's building up over here. Um, from here on out, we can just pretty much focus on making a massive amount of Zerglings. reason why is because we are going to be using them to just storm into the base after we have uh, dropped down a significant amount of units into their base. So, um, also invest in more overlords. Ah, that's okay. Ooh, wrong unit. With the amount of mutilisks that we have now, we are pretty much one-shotting. Oh yeah, Scorches. We, we don't need Scorches for this level. Uh, a, a unit I will talk about in a different level once we actually start using them. Ooh, 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 ooh. If we can do as much damage here as we possibly can. Ah oh, yeah, we lost some mutilisks. Do. Oh, what do you know? This place is actually getting depleted very quickly. Anyways, let's start moving our units into position, get our mutalisks to cover this area, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna drop a massive amount of units into, um, into the base over here. Okay. All forces are under attack. Okay, now keep on making units. Upgrades are looking decent. Wait for this one to finish and then we can actually send in our full scale assault. Okay. Okay, only that one is left. This one is left. Mutalisks are now much more durable. I'm making this level out to be a lot longer than what it actually is. Okay, here we go. And uh, along with these units. So, even if this attack does fail, 
we're gonna be doing so much damn damage to them that um, it's, it's not gonna be that much of a problem for us. We've done so much damage. We've broken through this area over here. Just just look at that. It's their army is literally melting at the stage. And from here on out, oh, the bulk of our army didn't even drop. What do you know? Huh, no wonder that didn't go as planned. Anyways, from here on out, just keep on making Zerglings. We, we have literally broken through the strongest of their defenses. And now we just overrun them. Make sure that we target the siege tanks with our Mutalisks. As you can see, our um, Mutalisks are also very durable now. Against stuff like Marines. And yeah, they've been overrun. We can hotkey our... Um, our hatcheries into their base and now just literally run have our that's the end of this level our forces are under attack There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of level 3 of the Zerg campaign. As you can see, nothing to it. It just takes a little bit of time to get a force and the upgrades and everything up and running in order to effectively deal with the Terran in pretty much one shot. As always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Refer to your friends that would like to learn some StarCraft. And of course, stay tuned for level 4 where we actually get to see what is inside of the Chrysalis. For those of you who do not know the storyline, I'll see you next time.